Mix them up, let's start the show. We're digging in with Trey. 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 We're digging in with Trey today. Yeah. Well, a lot of great candidates for the uh, NHL Dig In Player of the Month. Why am I in front of my Mahi Mahi? At the end of the day, when you look at the team success down in South Florida and the individual success with injuries, among others, to former Dig In guest, Florida Panther captain Alexander Barkov. Aaron Ekblad, coming back from a broken leg last year. He checks every box. He will get the shovel for the NHL. November Dig In Player of the Month, and he is a huge angler. He's caught a ton of mahi-mahi. He has caught three swordfish, and I've been on the elusive swordfish hunt for three years, and he's got three. He's dug in on all fronts, uh, currently here in early December, leading the National Hockey League with regards to production from the blue line, best plus minus among defensemen, a ton of great candidates in November. But thanks to the great people at Voodoo Ranger and a definite shout out to big time dig in supporter. I'm always thrilled to be uh, an influencer. I hesitate in using that word for the people at DITA. DITA.com, finest eye eyewear on the planet. And Voodoo Ranger, when you think about the finest IPA going, it's bold, it's smooth, uh, it hits the right spot, it digs in. Voodoo Ranger. Please continue to rate and review all of our podcasts, whether it be full episodes, whether it be the Canes Player of the Month, uh, thanks to the great people at Casual Elegance Designs, uh, and in this case, Voodoo Ranger and Dita. So without further ado, hey, by the way, before we get to Aaron Eckblad, because I'm going to send him a beautiful dig in with Trip uh, Gator that's perfect uh, for fishing purposes. Not that he needs any help, because he's caught everything under the sun, including the swordfish. Let's go down to South Florida and talk to a huge part of the Red Hot Florida Panthers, Aaron Eckblad. Aaron, we're going to get to, well, your numbers speak for themselves individually and coming back from that broken leg, which is digging into me. But without some key players, including former guest, your captain, Alexander Barkov, you guys just kept rolling in November, came from behind a lot of games, including Washington, to, to end the month. What do you like most about this team uh, that you're a leader for from a digging in perspective? Um, I think our depth uh, speaks for itself. Um, you know, I think obviously losing Barkey is, is crazy. It's hard to do without him. Uh, he's a, such a fantastic player and um, he's just so good. Uh, we don't have Marchman. We don't have Forsling right now. Um, had some young kids step up in the back end and, and provide some uh, some great stability for us back there. Uh, I think we've all, you know, dug in, I guess you could say, and and uh, have found ways to win. Well, I, you know, the, the Hurricanes just had a game of doubts, and you were en route to being a prime Norris Trophy candidate. You broke your leg, and that was before I knew you, and it was tough to watch. When you look at coming back from that, were there any moments that jump out to you where – I hate to keep using the phrase, but you had to really dig it. Um, yeah, I guess the whole summer. Um, rehab is extremely difficult. Um, in any league, any professional athlete will tell you it's, it's, uh, it's terrible. It's, it's not something you want to go through. Uh, a lot of guys go through it, and a lot of guys come out the other end. Um, guys like uh, Vinny Trocek and, and Dougie Hamilton reached out, um, both with similar in injuries, and were able to bounce back fairly quickly and have great seasons afterwards. So um, it gave me hope in that sense that I was able to lean on guys like that. Uh, we have terrific training staff here in Florida that, uh, you know, made it pretty seamless for me. I was able to come in every day and, and get some fantastic treatment. Uh, my surgeon was great. Um, I really had no complaints in the whole process and, and was able to, to get through it seamlessly. Yeah, I talked to former digging guest Vincent Trocek about you the other day when we were in Dallas. Uh, Troch, good man. But, yeah, I don't know what kind of candy bars you like, Aaron, but 
Three Musketeers I enjoy, and you're going to see where I'm going with this in one second. The three Musketeers that are you, Alexander Barkoff, and Jonathan Huberto. You've been through the tough times in Florida. You've built. You've sacrificed for what is a tremendous story right now. When you think about the three of you as three Musketeers, what comes to mind? Uh, yeah, I guess we've been through a lot together. Um, this is my eighth year. I think Arky's ninth and Hubie's 10th. Um, so we've been with the Florida Panthers for a long time. We've seen, uh, you know, the dark days. Um, and we realize that there's a bright future ahead for all of us in this team. And uh, the job that the ownership and GM, uh, Bill Zito, have done uh, to create a winning culture here and give us the tools that we need to succeed um, you know, that's, that's, what's really important. I think, uh, um, the culture is shifting here and, and we found a way to, um, create a winning culture. Okay. That's a very widely used word right now. The word culture, uh, you know, Rod Brennan, where I feel that Carolina has it, you know, where I'm employed, how do you define what is Aaron, a winning culture in the national hockey league? Um, I think it's the ability to prepare. Um, perform and be consistent on a nightly basis. I think that's, uh, that's what it boils down to. Um, the sacrifice that you need to make um, uh, to do those things, to be consistent and prepare well and, and just be um, all in for your team. When you, when you mention your owner, Vinny Viola, Matt Caldwell, your president, Billy Zito, the players, I see really good people. Can you, for people around the league, describe what the tangible buzz is like down there in South Florida right now? Because I find it terribly exciting. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, uh, it really boils down to that preparation, the willingness to succeed. Um, we have a lot of older guys that uh, – are imparting a lot of knowledge on, on us. And we've had a lot of older guys in the past that have, have done a great job of teaching myself, Barky and Hubie, uh, how to win and how to prepare and how to be consistent. And I think, uh, you know, we owe it to those guys and we owe it to ourselves to continue the tradition and um, just be the best we can be. Two more hockey questions. And I want to go off the beaten path quickly. Barky, I've grown to be very good friends with him. He doesn't have an enemy on the planet, Aaron, even in Antarctica. How is he able to mix being as nice of a guy as there is on the planet with as supreme of a competitor as there is out there? Um, maybe it's just the way he was, he was brought up. I mean, he's a, he's a fantastic competitor, obviously not an enemy on this, on this planet. Um, a great guy, undercover, one of the funnier guys, you know, in the locker room. Although he doesn't say a whole lot, he's uh, he's grown to be such a tremendous leader and, and someone we follow into battle on a nightly basis and, and uh, you know, would do anything for. You're a team first guy, but I'm looking, you're leading the league from the blue line in production, leading the league from the blue line in plus minus. When you, if you were to define, separate yourself from it, but if you were to define how a Norris Trophy candidate should be judged in the modern day National Hockey League. What would you say? Um, I think that's easy. It's uh, you know strong defensive play, um, reliable, consistent, um, elite defensively and elite offensively uh, at the position. I think it's important to be um, a great two way player, and I think uh, they do a great job every year of, of picking that player. Call Webster's, because that's a great definition, and you, my friend, are a prime candidate. All right. Anybody who's been watching Digging In knows I've been on an elusive swordfish hunt down in Miami for the last couple of years. I haven't been able to get one. I got one bite. You've got three, okay? Just tell me, if you could, what it was like. Pick your favorite one of the three when that swordfish popped out of the water. <laughs> Uh, fishing is great. It's a great way to get away from, from hockey in the summertime. Uh, I don't get to do much during the season at all. Uh, sword fishing has become a bit of a passion of mine. And I think uh, uh, when you see um, a fish like that in the water, all lit up three, 400 pounds, um, it's life changing. And it's uh, you uh, gain a whole new respect for the ocean and uh, you know, what's out there. It's, it's hard to explain um, when you see that fish in the water next to the boat. 
and its power and, and ability to you know kill you if it wanted to it's uh um it's pretty special it's a fun experience for sure awesome number one i'm going to send you a picture you've got three of them but when i catch one, i told you i'm going to eat the eye and i'm going to send you you don't need any angling luck but i'm going to send you a digging in gator aaron i love watching you play uh you're the you epitomize being shovel in hand continued success here in december very very proud to make you the nhl dig in player of the month Thank you, Shrep. I really appreciate it. You got it. You have a good one, and uh, uh, keep that rod in hand, too. <laughs> All right. Cheers. We're digging in with Trip today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. Today, yeah.